Hello, and welcome to the second season of the IT's Her Future podcast. This series is aimed at giving an insight into various careers in the technology space that you might be unfamiliar with and hear from guests who work in these areas. I'm your host, Neve, and this month we'll be discussing the area of data with our guest, Claire Hutchin. Claire, would you like to give us a bit of background about yourself? Sure. I'm a senior manager within the data team here in KPMG, based out of the Manchester office. I've worked with data for most of my career, which spans over two decades and makes me feel really very old. I started out as a grad in Hewlett Packard. My first role was as a service manager. This wasn't really for me, but I managed to negotiate a couple of role hops and ended working on a global finance data warehouse project. I spent several years at HP before moving to a consultancy role within Computer Science Corporation, which is CSC, and I mainly worked with healthcare data. CSC then merged with HP, forming DXC, which was a little bit cyclic. So I'd only actually work for those two companies and then they formed one, which was DXC. From DXC, I joined KPMG almost six years ago. At the moment, I'm doing my best to manage a dual role. I'm the Microsoft pillar lead for the data team, which means I ensure our team are enabled to work in the Microsoft technology space. For example, we need to make sure that team members are accredited with the necessary certifications. I also try and build a community environment between all of the different folks who work across the Microsoft space and ensure we know the correct people to speak to and we're all knowledgeable in the latest technology advances. One of the most important aspects is building and maintaining a relationship with our goal partners at Microsoft. And we're currently working really hard on becoming the Microsoft data partner of choice. I'm also the principal data architect within the connected learning platform which means I design all of the back office data architecture. For example, the case management system for people with queries or complaints and the event management system, which is where people kind of schedule training events. My current top priority within that project is a multi-tenant management information system, which brings together eight different data sources within the Azure modern data platform. This will revolutionise the current learning MI offering and provide insights which have previously been unexploited. Outside of work, I live in West Lancashire, which is sandwiched somewhere between Manchester and Liverpool. And I'm a mum to Francesca, 14 going on 21, and Connor who's 13. I describe myself as a football mum and taxi service. So that keeps me busy when I'm not doing all things related to data. And by the sounds of it, you're quite busy with all things related to data from your introduction. <laughs> What are some of the roles within the data space and a brief overview of what the differences between them might be? There are so many different roles within data and there's quite a lot of overlap really between a lot of them. You've got the data analyst who could be defined as someone who organises and interprets data into meaningful information to solve problems and provide business insight. You've also got a data scientist who uses algorithms, statistics, analysis techniques and normally works with huge complex data sets to find patterns and again, uncover insights. Data scientists develop models, they use machine learning, advanced programming to analyze the data. As with all of the roles, their end goal is provided business insight. Many data scientists start out as data analysts or statisticians. A data engineer typically builds systems for collecting, storing and analyzing data at scale. They typically deliver the design set out by the data architect, which I'll come to in a second. You also have data visualization engineers, and this is how the data is translated and presented to the target audience in an easy to use and understand format. The users of the visualizations should be able to make informed decisions or find insight based on how the data is being presented. Data architecture is a framework for how data within within an organisation can be stored, consumed, integrated and maintained. The data architect provides that blueprint for the data framework, which is then passed on to engineers, visualisation folks, data scientists, so they can build the appropriate pieces to make that data architecture work. So as you can see, there's many different roles. I probably haven't covered them all, but they're kind of the main ones many different roles, but they all have a crossover with like the end goal being to provide something that provides value to the end user. Great. So for the roles you've just outlined, what would you say are some key soft skills that are required to work in data? I think one of the most important things is to have a really keen, inquisitive mind. You need to have a desire to uncover patterns or help make a difference to decision making. 
You should actively enjoy data and have an analytical mindset. Attention to detail, being able to communicate well and also being able to traverse between the business and technology worlds is really, really super important. I think you also need to be a kind of a creative problem solver as well. In addition to the soft skills you've just outlined, what would you recommend as some more technical skills that are needed? For all of the roles that I mentioned earlier, there's normally a baseline set of skills that we would always kind of recommend. So things like data modelling is super important and span all of those different roles. SQL, you need that pretty much for everything that you do within data. But there's obviously more technical skills as you go into your area of specialism. There's Python, other programming languages. You can also use things like Azure DevOps or any development ops tool sets, really, to be able to move your code through the different environments and store things. So there's lots of technical skills. It depends which cloud technology that you wanted to get into as you go into more into your role. I'm obviously really focused on Microsoft. So there's things in there around Azure Data Factory, Azure OpenAI, which is a quite a hot topic as well, Synapse. They all really use SQL and Python and data modeling. So they're the key key technical skills, I would say. Great. So, Claire, where is data moving in the future, in your opinion? Becoming more and more involved in the Azure OpenAI, which seems to be a really hot topic at the moment. Microsoft have invested a lot of money and have a partnership with OpenAI, the maker of the chat GPT tool. Microsoft is the exclusive cloud provider for the tool since OpenAI uses Azure to train all of its models. This tells us a lot about where Microsoft are heading in the future. Microsoft are also releasing or have just recently released Copilot, which is similar to the paperclip that was found a while ago in PowerPoint and Excel. And so helping to assist you in all of the things that you're doing. The Copilot is run by Copilot uses AI to kind of help with what you're trying to do in more of the technology focused tool sets. It's worth noting that Azure OpenAI cannot exist alone and it needs all of the other technologies to provide a rounded solution. For example, storage accounts to store the data, Azure Data Factory, a tool to automate data movement, Databricks or Synapse, Apache Spark engines for processing large amounts of data. So although Azure OpenAI and ChatGPT are real buzzwords, They can't exist independently. More and more as we go forward, it's going to be about making cost savings to the customer, whether that's by automating processes using the available tools or by uncovering insights that differentiate you from your customers to make increases in market share. One other topic I would say, which is something that should always be considered and is something that's going to be discussed even more in the future, is ethical and social responsibility which surrounds data. So it's not just how you store and handle the data, but the use of the data and the algorithms within data science, which is obviously part of AI, because the data science bit and the models and the algorithms are written by humans and can contain unintended bias. So that's something that I think is going to become more and more prevalent as we're moving into the space of using AI within everything that we do in the data world. I didn't have a lot of knowledge about where data is moving before this discussion, but it seems like there are a lot of interesting updates coming up. Related to where data is moving in the future, what is your opinion on diversity in the data field and how it is changing? There was not a lot of diversity within the technology space from my early career. From even doing my computing A-level to a technology degree, as a female, I was always in the minority It wasn't really something I was overly concerned with. It just seemed to be the norm. So I guess all the females who worked in in the tech space just got on with it. What I did notice was that over time, my female counterparts gradually switched careers to something that suited their work-life balance better, maybe when they started a family or different priorities came along. But what I have noticed over the years is that females are sticking with the data careers because they are better supported by the companies that they're working for. There's a lot more focus on the gender pay gap and increased encouragement for females to join and remain within technology, which is a really positive step and something that wasn't there perhaps 20 years ago when I started out on my career journey. To wrap up the podcast, I'd like to end with some practical advice. What would you say to either someone at entry level looking to enter data or perhaps somebody considering a career change? 
I just tell them to be curious and to ask questions. And you probably know more than you think about data because data is involved in everything we do and can be applied to most things in everyday life, from things like banking and fraud to your supermarket loyalty card or the marketing information that you receive. You just need to learn the tools to work with the data. What I would also suggest to somebody and what I did quite early on in my career, and I still actually do now, is if I see somebody who does a role that I think is really interesting or I'd like to get involved, I'll approach that person and ask them how they got involved in that role, what they did, how they got to that career point, what was their journey. And people are normally really happy to talk about themselves and how they've progressed. But it can give you a real insight into how you can start your journey. And if people know that you're interested in that role, then they might give you an opportunity to move into something similar or put you in touch with people who can help you. That was some really great advice. Thank you so much, Claire, for talking with us today. It was great to hear your insights, and I hope those listening have learned a lot about the area of data. If you think a career in tech or within KPMG is for you, please go to our website, www.kpmgcareers.co.uk. If you wish to reach out to IT's Her Future to ask any questions, or if you have any topics you think we should cover, the email is itsherfuture at kpmg.co.uk. Thank you for listening.